Calling to order the August 6, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. Please stand for the black flag. such meeting, I and serve the public for the stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that College of the Redwoods is located on the unceded territory of the Wiat, Kutha, Karuk, Matol, Talawa, Arlaki, and Yurok people, where they have resided from time immemorial. We encourage all to gain a deeper understanding of their history and thriving culture. As an expression of our gratitude, we are genuinely committed to developing trusting, reciprocal, and long-lasting partnerships with the Wiat people, as well as all of our neighboring tribes. Moving on to agenda item 2.1, general public comments. And it looks like we have um, Bill Connors here. Bill Connors? Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. I uh, got to know my field, but we ask you to uh, press the button so we get you in the mic. So we press the button. Just... And is the light red? Yep. Perfect. We're ready. Can you hear me? Now? We can hear you perfectly. Can hear you. you can hear me before I'm recording. You're being recorded. <laughs> okay. I got this flyer in the mail and I had some questions about it and I started looking at things and uh, I saw that it's for bonds. Oh, this is one of the things for bonds is housing. I'll get to that in a minute because I had a question about this because I saw oh, last time. Aren't I paying for bonds still on my property taxes? And I went and I looked it up. And yes, I'm paying for government or general obligation bonds for CR on my taxes last year. And there was a number to call here. And so I called that number and found out that the person whose number that was was out of the office on vacation or something, and they left another number. And I called that number, and I called them on Friday. So then I waited until Monday, and I called again. And that person, I told her what I wanted to know, and uh, she said that she didn't know, and I said, I understand that you wouldn't know this off the top of your head. So I'll call you well, at the end of the day. And I don't remember whether I called back or she returned my call, but she said she didn't know the answer, that she would have to look it up and she'd get back to me later in the week. Well, this was about three weeks ago and I've never gotten a call. So those answers never, were never close to Okay, so that's a big <clears throat> part that is housing. I don't understand why you want to use geo bonds to build dorms when these dorms were built with revenue. And the rationale for having housing on campus originated from the fact that our districts in the north, far north, are very large. Every district north of Sacramento has dorms, and a few below that, like Butte and Bakersfield, because they have very large districts. Theory being that with such large districts, it's a little hard to commute from, say, Hoopa. To the, the campus. So let's build dorms and make them available to those people. Nice rationale, but it didn't work out that way. I can tell you from experience that better than 90% of the students living in the dorms up until about 15, 20 years ago, when I lost track of who those people were, all came from out of the district. Every last one. So I don't understand why. We, as taxpayers, should pay for housing for people from out of the district. That's all. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you. Okay. And you'll excuse me if I don't say too much. Because it's out today. Yes. Good to see you, Bill. Thank you. Okay, moving on Okay, moving on to um, agenda item 2.2, .2, member comments. Any of my fellow trustee comments? Okay. 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 Okay.
On July 12th, I attended the police academy of graduation, police academy graduation, along with fellow trustees, President Robertson and Vice President Mullery. And it's always a pleasure to see our local police agencies benefit from the hard work of the cadets and those involved with the academy itself. Thank you. Yes, I, I also attended that graduation and I wanted to specifically note that I'm always pleased when you hear uh, Trustee Emeritus, um, Bruce Amod and his wife, Faye's name mentioned because they have a, a trust fund that they um, set aside for any cadet who graduates and then is hired by the police. And there were uh, two cadets in this class who were hired by the Rica Police Department and therefore did receive a uh, sort of startup funding um, from the uh, Bruce and Faye and the Dodge Trust, which I think is, is and of course, the, as you may not know, this boardroom is named after um, uh, Dresden Marriage is receiving. So I wanted to mention that. I also wanted to mention that I attended a special um, CR Foundation board meeting on Thursday, August 1st. So it was not the regularly scheduled meeting, and it was um, very well attended. And I think one reason it was so well attended is because the one and only agenda topic was the uh, bond measure, and whether or not the foundation was in a position to pay it to support the bond measure. Um, we had a really good conversation about consultants in the day. So um, we could answer questions from the foundation members. And um, in the end, they not only enthusiastically uh, voted to contribute to the fund to help with communication of the fund, $175,000, but we're going to have a follow up meeting or a regular meeting to discuss whether or not um, some additional funding is warranted. So it was a, a, a good meeting, and I was really pleased to see how positive the foundation board members were about supporting. Thank you. I don't think you for reporting the lines. Um, I, oh, sorry, Trustee Bacon, I'm going to trust you, Don, and then I wanted to report that I had an opportunity to watch some of the videos from the Chancellor's office for the Trustee Committee. And what really Interest me is for the last few months they've been doing an AI for many workshops with trustees, and they have you know, different uh, professionals from various school districts and from the private sector you know, updating the trustees on the state of the arts. Um, but what really fascinated me is some of the discussion about the chat uh, GPT uh, that it's been going to a Version five, grade six, but right now version four. I've never tried to use chat GPT, but I found out what GPT stands for. Mm -hmm. And G stands for generative, Sorry, generative, generative, which they say you know includes images, syllabi, lesson plans, schedules, um, you know, all kinds of things that can generate. And then the P stands for pre-trained. And they trained it by putting public data in there, all the Wikipedia stuff is in there, the New York Times. They even mentioned, oh, is it Enron? I don't even know what Enron is, but I've heard that term before. Um, and they just recently uh, uh, released the uh, Reddit material, so they keep adding data. And then the T stands for transformer, which is a neural network. Okay, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I I was I'm just I continue to be fascinated with that field. I know um, Trustee Kelly is on the committee of the Trustee Peak Board that's uh, looking at it. But um, that that was one part of that trustee meeting that I really enjoyed. So I wanted to share that with you. Sounds like you learned a lot, yeah. <laughs> Trustee Dorn. I also attended the foundation board meeting that Colleen uh, Trustee Mullery talked about, and she did a, an amazing description of it. She actually pointed out some of the interesting things in the argument in favor of the bond 
And also, we were given a budget of how the 175000 would be spent. You know, it's pretty interesting how they, I mean, they anticipate it will be spent. They're not, until the committee actually sees the budget, then they'll decide how it's spread out. But it's basically heavily rerun with the So that was. Thank you. Okay, so I too attended the um, Police Academy graduation and it was a wonderful event. It was really nice to see the strong connections between law enforcement agencies and the program, both in terms of um, the instructors and then also um, the graduates who have been hired into those agencies and so many other personnel that were not instructors even were there to support um, their incoming employees. That was really fantastic. Okay, moving on to agenda item 2.3, board committee reports. Trustee Dorn. And then do I see Trustee Kelly's hand go up? Trustee Matthews. So the President Eval committee met seems like several times in the last month of that is with Trustee Bingham and Trustee uh, Mullery. Um, one thing we did accomplish is we were tasked with updating the president's job description. We have done that and approved it, and it has gone to the HR for, um, I guess, their review or in the file in the, in, in the file in case we need it in the future. Um, the other thing is we met with President Flamer this afternoon and went over um, his contract and some revisions, and we'll bring, bring those forward this afternoon in closed session for your approval or discussion. Discussion and approval. Potential. Yes, uh, yes, I would just like to report that uh, Trustee Muller and I have met uh, via phone and email uh, to complete the review of the 2000 series of the board policies. And the last group of those are on the agenda for the first reading today. I want to thank her for her input and all of her time. And I want to thank you for all of your work and yeah. This is a heavy This is much appreciated. Trustee <coughs> Gotti. Yes, I'm on the Bond Executive Committee, which is now called the Committee to Support College of the Redwoods, yes, on measure. I <laughs> and uh, we met for the first time on Thursday, August 1st, to review the bond argument language and approve the officers and bank signatories. Julie or Julie will maybe already has filed the necessary paperwork with the state to create an official him a letterhead and open a bank account. Barry Barnes's firm will develop the campaign website, complete the pre frequently asked questions and revise the bond argument language based on feedback from the foundation board and the bond executive committee. And then also we learned at that time that the foundation had donated the 175,000. So that was good news. Thank, Thank you. you. And I look forward to um, continued reports. Okay, so moving on to 2.4, status of Board of Trustees requests. Do you have any questions about the request of our status? Moving on to 2.5, um, this is an action item to amend the board meeting dates, um, times and locations for 2024. Mm -hmm. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. I'm moving on to the consent calendar. Would anyone like to pull an item from the consent calendar? Okay, do you have a motion? I move to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Approved. Um, moving on to action and discussion items, 4.1, approve the monthly financial status reports. I move for approval. I'll say. Okay, do you have any questions or anything that 
Thank you. Oh, if the trustees have questions or not. All right, all those in favor of approving the monthly financial status report, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. The monthly financial status report is, has been approved. Moving on to 4.2, ratify Vice President of Instruction slash Student Development Contract, Dr. Crystal Morris. Um, and so I will read out the, the changes to this contract, um, and then we will have a motion. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, the two-year contract dated July 1, 2024 to June 30, 2026, agreed to between President Kramer and Vice President Morse, includes the below salary and fringe benefits. The salary of Dr. Morse shall be set at range 136, step 14 of the Administrator Manager Salary Schedule, currently $221,894.40. Um, annually to be paid monthly in equal installments. Dr. Morris will receive step increases commensurate with the position and the COLA included in the Governor's State Budget Act. Dr. Morris shall earn 20 days of annual vacation with pay, exclusive of holidays as defined in Education Code Sections 79020 and 79021. Dr. Morse shall receive medical coverage, dental coverage, vision coverage, life insurance, and disability insurance at the same level provided to administrators of the district. Dr. Morse will receive an annual car allowance of $2,400 and an annual doctoral stipend of $1,500. Second. Yes, I had a question. This really uh, doesn't have anything to do with Dr. Chris's contract, um, but a question in general, it's kind of in the committee I serve in. And that is, is there any link between salary increases and performance? Or is a step increase just simply automatic for what is performance? For anyone below the president? And I'm saying that's the norm. That's normal here. I'm sorry. And normal in this system? Yes, it's, it's our past, past practice and it's also within similar systems. Any other questions? Okay. Um, hearing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. The contract has been approved and ratification has been approved. <coughs> Moving on to 4.3, first read of board policies and administrative procedures. This is a discussion item. Does the committee like to give us an overview? Well, I'm like, um, just okay. an advocate to the overview. I'm just an um, overview. So, okay. I, I'm not going to add anything. Um, materials are there. Uh, Lynn never had no changes. This was reviewing these policies with uh, the um, Jimmy College League of California's templates for legal changes, references, uh, additions, etc. And um, if you have any questions or Trustee Muller want to comment on them, otherwise if you have any questions about any of the policies or changes. Again. I have a question about the last policy, the uh, 2800 related to the general funding survey. What was posted in our board packet is our normal format <laughs> and it includes a copy of a email <coughs> or something at the bottom. And I wondered if will it be reformatted to be more consistent with the other policies? Yes. Thank you, Tracy. And that's the one I wanted to comment on. Uh, I initiated the view of that and then discussed it with Tracy with you. Um, the, the reason you see there, there are two versions. One is the regular template. And the one is because I added a comment, which you cannot 
place in board doc. But I wanted um, the board to understand where my thinking was coming from when I um, was recommending that we might want to raise the floor of 5% to some other number, be it 7, 8, 9, 10, what have you. And, and the reason I felt that was at least worth the conversation is because there, there was no template for this one. So I went into the CCLC handbook on fiscal responsibility. And what you see in, in one of the versions of that comment, that was uh, cut and pasted directly from CCLC's fiscal responsibility um, um, book. And, and if you look at that, it, it notes that the Chancellor's Office, I'm reading it now, uses 5% as a minimum reserve level. Then it goes on to say 15 20% is more prudent. Ours had stated 5%. And while I think 15 to 20% is, is too high, because we still have language in there recommending that we have you know, two months uh, in reserve. Uh, the 5% the floor just seemed too low. So what did we end up with? 8%, 8%, 8% yeah. I, I, I put in the 8% and I wanted to just have a conversation with the rest of you as to whether or not you thought that was appropriate to raise the floor floor from 5% to some other number. And if you felt 8% or some other number um, should be considered. So that's why you see the two different versions. The, the one so you could see where the comment came from and the other because that's the way we're done. That's it. Mr. Kelly? Um, is it necessary to have a percentage spelled out in this policy? Uh, perhaps the district needs flexible language so that we can set the reserves to whatever the conditions are for a given year. Um, honestly, I, I think the 10% might be a little, a little low. I would have wanted more like 15% myself, but um, I just am wondering if it's even necessary in the language at all. And maybe somebody knows. Well, that's a floor, and the policy yeah. does say that the district shall target um, to maintain an unrestricted un a general fund reserve balance that equals at a minimum greater than or equal to two months of total general fund operating expenditures. Which to me is great language. I don't know so if we need a percentage. And other yeah. I, I, I don't know, Tristan Kelly, if that's actually in the ed code, but I, my, my recollection is that there is a requirement for some type of minimum. And if we go below the minimum, then they bring in big guns and say, hey, we're going to take over your board. So that's why I'm thinking that there is some language somewhere that says you shall not go below. Something minimum. Um, am I, am I thinking? Actually, it's a, it's a standard. Yes. New standard. So, but that that requires us to to say a percentage, because I I would think that the the minimum language could be two months reserve. Well, we're already then um, below the minimum. Yeah, we can't. Then we have. Well, minimum. we could add more months. I, I'm just saying, like, uh, I I guess. What I'm wondering is, is there a requirement for a specific percentage target? Or could we use more flexible language like so many months reserved for the district? Is that our language has to equal the two months? I think it's very prudent for the board to set a floor uh, before that the year that, that the college would never go below because you don't have something in the future. Um, if you remember, most of you may remember, is, is that the college got in trouble because we were almost at one percent of two percent, and that's when the commission said we we have problems, we have to fix you. So having so at least five percent, I think five five percent is the right for us. Um, it should be, I think, the floor should be higher than five percent, but we should have five percent for just just to protect the institution. I'm comfortable with the 8%. I think the 5% is irresponsible. Um, just to answer 
I think it's written somewhere the five percent. Like Ed Code Ed somewhere, I think what well, Trustee Mullery was saying that there is a place that yes. that mentions yes. So I, I think that our language definitely is flexible. I think the advantage of listing in percentages that then that's that is an easy to determine fixed number, first of all, if you're trying to establish a floor. The percentage uh, is, is easy to determine and it's fixed. There's no discussion about how much floor you think that be. Um, I think uh, targeting the two months is a, is a target we you know, can strive for. Um, and we have done, I believe, um, pretty well with maintaining not two months, but maintaining good reserve, uh, even with our um, you know budget challenges and potential budget challenges, and uh, I think that that's really very very important to do. Um, I agree that five percent, you know, I I'd be much happier with eight percent. But so I I, and hopefully we won't we won't see eight percent. And so this is the first read that will come back to us in second read. Um, and I, I think the question is, are we all comfortable with this coming back with 8%, right? Yeah, or, um, you know, of course, Mr. Kelly has raised another idea, but in lieu of 8%, if we go with the percentage, is 8% a reasonable number to insert there? And, and just to be clear, meaning the minimum. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, is a whole different thing. Yeah, right, right. And that is in that's in that yeah. language. Yeah. Sounds like okay. <clears throat> Any other questions that come about any of the other things? Yes, keep the I was looking at BP twenty seven thirty. And that has to do with the um, health benefits. Mm -hmm. And I noticed there's not like a date. But, and I don't know if this is where we mention it, but like I'm thinking like if there's a board member that doesn't get reelected, so all of a sudden they're off the board, then getting health benefits, you know, that like maybe there should be a grace period because. You know, someone would have to get off their benefits right away and then find other benefits. Or Medicare takes, you know, three months to get on and that kind of thing. So I don't know if this is a place where we put a date or have a grace period. That's a, that's a good question. Yes, um, it is an excellent question. I'm not sure if it would work for this purpose, but. In other arenas, when you lose your benefits unexpectedly, um, there's a COBRA that you can go on. And the COBRA, I'm forgetting now, lasts for like three to six months, but it's, it's, it provides a transition period right. for the yes. person who has lost their health benefits so they can get them health benefits. I assume, although I don't know this for a fact, that COBRA would. I thought it was Ed Code that you could buy a former board member of any school district could buy the coverage at the cost to the district. I don't know the answer. I thought we I can find I can get that. I, that it's not COBRA, you're just paying the cost you're of the insurance. The, the plan. Yeah. And you can buy parts of the plan because George bought parts of the plan. I'm <laughs> sorry. And they got wrong. The last paragraph sort of addresses that. And um, there, there is a yeah. limit to how long that type of coverage is eligible. 
Yeah, I'm not. I I don't think it's pertinent. All I think that's just may continue to participate in the district's health benefits mm -hmm. program so long as they pay the entire cost of benefits. <coughs> Thank you for raising that question. Any other questions or comments about these policies? Okay. Um, moving on to 4.4, .4, the second read of board policies and administrative procedures. This is an action item. Motion. I move to approve. I'll second. Um, do we have any questions or comments before we make to vote? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of approving the board policies and administrative procedures, um, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. <coughs> any abstentions? All right, these are approved. <coughs> Moving on to informational reports, um, agenda item 5.1, recognitions. Would you like to add? This is always a pleasure to put in the book back in. Um, every time I end up writing something about my colleagues, I feel very, very gratified and lucky to be here to work with such wonderful folks. So, so look forward to seeing more of these recognition of the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I always very much enjoy reading them. And the um the scholarship funds for students that um has have been raised through the foundation I think are fantastic. Bring recognition to those. Moving on to five points to acknowledgement of Dr. John Jackson. Thank you. Um as you have seen, there's some ups and downs, pros and cons of my friends in here at Cal Poly. And I think regardless of what everybody has said that the right word is not, but in this case, of what has happened in the last six months. Um, I I want to acknowledge my relationship with him personally and Cal Poly. I think that there's there's really no doubt that the advantages that CR to see because of, uh, the, because of, of what we, we've been able to accomplish together. And I want to publicly recognize Dr. Jackson and what he's done for that part and for CR. Thank you. Moving on to 5.3, summary of enrollment by modality. We wanted to, sorry, yeah, I can start. Yes, please. <laughs> Come, coming out of COVID, we set um, a goal of 64 to 60% of, of uh, courses in person, just as a guide, because we really did not know what effect COVID had when we were put a screen with one people. Um, I thought that it was very healthy for us to, to, to provide with this report to the board so we could see what we're doing so far. And I think that we have, uh, with, I think that we have done well to hit that guideline of 60 40. Um, and it, where it says fall of 2024, again, that, that's going to change over the next couple of weeks as, as we start either adding courses or um, canceling courses. But I think that, that this has been very helpful. Thank you. Moving on to 5.4. So I'm wondering how now that you know at first it was a 60-40 was the goal, how now are you determining what the breakdown shall be? Is it based on um enrollment in the previous semester or what's the determination? I think that that's how we sometimes like to build the schedule. However, we we, we took a different track this year that we just didn't want to roll the schedule over the next semester to you. But I think that that may have formed that as a foundation. But what we also took a very, very close look at is 
where students are enrolled. And of course, then we, we see a lot more students enrolling in the online. It depends. Um, but we are not an online college, so we want to put in those mm -hmm. um, And the other piece, of course, is we look at how you know, what the profit and loss per, per course. And so we uh, try to figure out how much money we're making per course. We know that some courses we don't make as much money per course as others. Um, but we also think that even if we're going to lose money in some courses, that it's important for, for students to feel off. So uh, Dr. Morris and the deans work very hard to look at each course individually almost once a week to yeah. figure out where we should go. So I think this I think that 60 40 is a pretty good guide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, um, one question I have out of curiosity because it's not it's not playing field anymore. Yes, what was that breakdown prior to COVID? Yes, actually, it was um, we only had like twenty percent was on the twenty twenty five percent. Yeah, looking at the fall twenty twenty seventeen to ninety percent. Well, true, and that was quite a um, My second question is: um, uh, Do we know, um, or can you tell me? Uh, how the um, Del Norte enrollment between uh, online and on campus is going. That has been taken an effort to to increase the in person enrollment on that campus again. It still is an effort. It still is an effort. But right now we're, we're trying to balance giving students what they need in person, but we also see more and more students. Why to go on right in front of them. And so we have to find out that. Because we also know that if we don't put more courses face to face, based on current uh, curriculum, then there won't be a lot of traffic on them. So the question that uh, we need to answer isn't so much of how many of the current curriculum do we put on the line or face to face, but what additional curriculum degrees it serve and what degrees of classes. That would be attractive face to face that we also are not yet. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea of the number of students that don't need the district that are involved in online classes? I do not, but we have our director of DE, and I will ask her after the board meeting, and I'll send that to the full board in front of Thank you. Moving on to our organizational reports, um, 6.1 Academic Senate President Aaron Wall. Hello, the I'm out in the meeting. I'm serving coming in for um, my year as Senate President. And um, last year in the spring, I had the pleasure with our um, with Gianna Herrera, Dr. Herrera, who was our president, of um, having lunch. Um, mm -hmm. with the President Robertson and Vice President Mullery with the board to work at building, you know, stronger relationships. I really appreciated um, that opportunity. And so today here is our first, my first board meeting now as president. I thought I could bring a fun Chris. <laughs> I've never been before. It's not that faculty have been doing work, but the culmination of our work um, is going to be coming here at publication. Um, and you can see some of that um, in Dr. Morris's report about the curriculum institute. There's a lot of changes and that have already been in, in talks with our curriculum committee chair um, and folks in distance education and just kind of getting everything ready to go. So I'll report on um, a lot of those kickoff activities um, at the September board meeting. Um, but I'll let you all decide when you want to enjoy. Um, Chris, I did take the foil off because it was still pretty warm. <laughs> Thank you very much. And welcome. I'm sorry. What kind of husband Almost. Almost. Okay. Okay. You're hungry. Um, Chris. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
We were going so quick. Okay. <laughs> yes. okay. I'm going to move on and we can talk about it. So 6.5, 6.4, Board. Management Council President Morgan is welcome. It's nice to see you today. Yeah, you're new. Um, I'd like to welcome our two new members to Management Council Courtney, our new uh, management mushrooms, and Jose, our assistant director in human resources and payroll. Um, let's see if we have any questions when we're ready to report. Thank you. Now, 6.5 student trustee Ariel Glenn. Ariel. Hello, Helen. Hello, um, I just had the pleasure of attending my first uh, student trustee workshop. So that was that was definitely a ton of fun. I got to um, connect with the student trustees from community colleges all over the state, and it was it was it was really fun to stretch myself in some ways, and then also just try to zone in and get as much information as I could. But then also find out what things, what kinds of things were happening at other colleges versus what was happening here on campus. And um, you see student trustees from single college districts, from multi-college districts, from single college, multi-campus districts. And it was just, it was a lot to take in. And it was, it was a very, very adventurous weekend. So, yes. I'm sorry? Where was it? In Burlingame. In Burlingame, yeah, it was beautiful. There was a trail right by the right by the bay, and you could see all the planes coming in. And the of course, I right to the airport. It yeah. really did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so, <laughs> is Tammy Amen? Then we will move on to administrative reports. Seven point one. President Superintendent Dr. Kipta. Thank you. I wanted to thank the foundation board for their trust in us and to award us $175,000 for the measure I keep in. And it's, it was a good conversation last week, and I really do, do appreciate their, uh, their sponsorship of this campaign. Thank you. Um, next, Mr. Moving on to 7.2, Vice President of Instruction and Student Development, Dr. Kristen Morris. Good afternoon. Um, in addition to my great report, I would just like to extend my gratitude for ratifying the approval of Gordon Souza as Ireland's manager of registration services. Um, additionally, I just want to report out that we are tracking and implementing the Title IX changes with the 2024 final rule of law to include really speedy turnaround on some policy updates, uh, given that the lead and the legal opinions came out from this week in late July, moved into an interim um, policy supporting our Title IX or prohibition of sex discrimination um, under Title IX, and you will be seeing those through the normal process outside of the interim um, phase this fall. Additionally, we're moving into specific training requirements that accompany the 2024 final rule and for both students as well as employees. Um, and additionally, training and new Title IX coordinator. Colin Trujillo has initiated his training with the Title IX coordinator role. We have deputy coordinators to pay for our move who continues to support all of our students if they have to engage the process. Are there any questions that I may address for the board? Thank you very much. 
Um, Kevin Franchetti, Vice President of Administrative Services, Ms. Julie Morris. Hi, good afternoon. I did want to add, as far as the capital outlay updates go, um, as with the Delmore Center remediation work and open repair, the job walk was last week, and we had three contractors uh, show up for the job walk. One was Broward Construction, and they are one of our pre qualified contractors for the PE project. Uh, we also had SMB James show up, and they were our general contractor for the Creative Arts Complex project. Mm -hmm. And then we had Sequoia Construction show, and they have been um, a sub for a lot of our on campus uh, projects. <coughs> Hopefully, all three will submit um, responses to the RFP, and the recommendation to award will go to the board next month. I also wanted to add, I was able to participate in an informational meeting for the statewide state of, uh, statewide lease revenue bond program um, that is for the student housing. Um, if you recall, the district has been in the queue for 28.4 million from the state for our affordable student housing program. And that 28.4 um, will help with the project. It's not going to cover the full cost of the project. The full cost is currently estimated at about 95 million. Um, but the information meeting um, gave a lot of um, background on what the relationships will look like. It's going to involve the public works board, the chancellor's office, or the governors, and participating colleges. Um, um, and that's like a lease, lease back situation. So uh, there will be more to come once they have the different documents that we'll be executing um, for literally for this agreement to look forward. Um, so more coming on that soon. And then finally, I did hear from our finance folks on the general obligations on refunding um, that we heard about recently. And uh, if you recall, the board had set a threshold of $500,000 in taxpayer savings. And as of last week, the current market conditions, um, the taxpayer savings estimate is 577,000. So our Canon finance team is gonna start the process um, with the rating, credit rating agency, which would be the next step. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Trustee Dorn. I probably should have asked it during the monthly report. So how about closing the books out? What's your estimate? Well, our audit uh, final visit is scheduled for, I think it's the second week in September. So that's when we plan to have everything ready. That includes the 311, fingers crossed. And that's really signifies that the books are closed once we get that reporting done. Great. Good job. Thank you. Jesse Bagan. I saw that College of the Roses is uh, one of the 13 that are involved in this lease back arrangement. Mm -hmm. How can you remind me how that's different than what the original award was going to be? So originally it was going to be a grant. This here's some money, uh, spend it as according to application. Uh, no complicated arrangements for having about the bonds or anything because the state at the time thought they would have the cash to do that, but the financial outlook changed, and so they had to do more of a borrowing situation. Um, but initially, once the grant went away, it was going to be a local level financing, um, but there was a lot of pushback from the participating colleges, so the state trying to find a state level program um, in order to, then they would be responsible for the bonds, and the districts wouldn't be in the middle of the financing. Okay, great. I'm glad we're still in the pool. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Moving on to 7.4, Executive Director of College Advancement and Foundation, uh, Mr. Murray Fellow. He is, we can try to set up the auctions and we can have it. Okay. Um, that moves us to agenda item 8.1. Here's a trustee request to place an item on a future agenda or direct staff to give a regular report. Okay. Um, we will move to closed session. Record. Almost. Almost. <laughs> um, so, in closed session, we have two items. 11.1 uh, is a consideration of recommendation for student expulsion um, for Ed Code section 72122. Um, item 11.2 is public employee performance evaluation of the president superintendent for California Government Code section 5. Four nine five seven. And so I also move that we break for until two o'clock to have some crisps. <laughs> and then get back to us. Is that on the agenda? <laughs>
<laughs> I can write it in real quick. <laughs> Hopefully, it's still warm. Yes. Okay, so we'll take 10 minutes and then do closed session. <laughs>
I'm not going to travel this much. Okay, we are um, reconvening back into open session to report out on our two closed session items. Um, closed session item 11.1 consideration of recommendation for student expulsion. Um, the board took ac action in closed session by unanimous vote to reject the appeal following um, district policy AP 5500, and also by unanimous, unanimous vote to impose the discipline of expulsion to student number 0208939. Um, on closed session, do I need to say it again? My mic wasn't on. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that. Um, closed session item 11.2 Public Employee Performance Evaluation of President Superintendent. No action was taken. Um, we will adjourn. Positive. <laughs>